All right, this is the review for the quiz on rational exponents and solving radical equations. Okay, number one just says write x to the 2 9th power in radical form. So all you need to know for this one is that the denominator becomes your index. So the denominator is 9. That's going to be my index. And what's under the radical will be x squared. Okay. So that's the answer for that one. Number two, write the fourth root of x cubed in exponential form. So again, the index is the denominator. And that number right there will be the numerator. If there's no number there, you just put a 1. Okay. But uh, in this case, it's a 3, so it's going to be x to the 3 fourths power. Also, keep in mind, if there's no index, then the index is implied to be a 2. Okay? Okay, for numbers 3 through 6, simplify each expression. So there's a couple ways to think about number 3. One way to think about it is that 1,296 is the same as 6 to the 4th power. So if I rewrite... 1,296 as 6 to the 4th power, and I have 6 to the 4th power raised to the 1 4th power. You multiply the exponents together, so it's really 6 to the 4 4th power, which is 6 to the 1st power, which is just 6. That's one way to think about it. Another way to think about it is you could write it in radical form where the denominator is the index. So it, you can also think about it like the fourth root of 1296. So what number times itself four times is 1296? Well, it's six because it equals six to the fourth power. So no matter how you think about it, the answer is six. Okay. Number four, you have to raise everything to the fifth power. Everything. Okay. So it's six to the fifth power. Okay. It, it's x to the one fifth to the fifth power. It's y to the three fifths to the fifth power. And finally, it's z to the fifth power. Okay. 6 to the 5th power is 7,776. X to the 1 5th to the 5th, multiply the exponents. You get X to the 5 over 5, which is just X to the 1st. Y, 3 fifths times 5, is Y to the 3rd power. And then finally, you have Z to the 5th power. And that's my answer. Okay. So the key thing is making sure you raise everything inside the parentheses to the fifth power in that problem. Everything. Okay? Number five. Okay. So, how should we think about this one? Well, five times seven is 35. For the x's, when you multiply with the same base, you add the exponents. So this is really 2 thirds plus 1 fourth for the exponent. Now you need a common denominator to add those exponents together. I'm going to get a common denominator of 12. So 2 thirds equals 8 over 12, because 3 times 4 is 12, so the numerator, 2 times 4 is 8. And 1 fourth with the denominator of 12 means you're multiplying by 3, so you got to multiply the numerator by 3 as well. Now you can add those exponents and make it 11 to the 12th power. So the final answer 
is 35 and then x to the 11 over 12 power. Okay. Uh, this next one. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So I have x, and I'm going to subtract the exponents because I'm dividing. When you divide with the same base, you subtract the exponents. So this equals 2x, and the exponent is going to be 7 ninths minus 3 fourths. Okay. In example 5, I had to add because I was multiplying with the same base. Okay, see, I was multiplying the x's. This time I'm dividing, so I'm subtracting the exponents. And again, we need a common denominator. In this case, it's going to be 36. So 2x is going to be 36 for the exponent, for my denominator. So 7 ninths, I'm multiplying 9 by 4 to get 36. So I'm going to multiply 7 by 4 to get 28. I multiply 4 by 9 to get 36. So I multiply 3 by 9 to get 27. Now you subtract the exponents and you get 2x. And the exponent is going to be 1 over 36. Okay. Next page. Solve each equation. Make sure to check for extraneous solutions. You have to check for extraneous solutions. Okay, that's, that's very important. So first thing, you want to isolate the radical. So add 1 to each side. Square root of 9x plus 10 equals 8. 7 plus 1 is 8. Now I'm going to square each side of the equation. Square each side. On the left, I get 9x plus 10. With square rooting and squaring are inverses. On the right, I get 64. Solve the fx, subtract 10 on each side. 9x equals 54. Divide by 9, x equals 6. Now we have to check for an extraneous solution. We have to check to see if that actually works. So let's check it. Uh, square root in the original equation, 9 times x, so 9 times 6, plus 10, and minus 1. Under the square root, 54 plus 10. Give you 64 under the square root. Square root of 64 is 8. Minus 1 is 7. So that one worked because it was supposed to equal 7. So good, that one worked. Check. And let's box that in for my final answer. X equals 6. Number eight. Again, let's isolate the radical. So add five to each side. Square root of 3x plus 13 equals x plus 5. Now I'm going to square each side. I'll do that in the next step. Square each side. On the left, you get 3x plus 13. On the right, if you don't know the shortcut, you have to write out x plus 5 times x plus 5 and then distribute and combine like terms. But hopefully you know the shortcut by now. Square the first term. This is the shortcut for squaring a binomial. Squaring two terms. Okay? Square the first term. x squared. <clears throat> Multiply the two terms together and then double that. So plus 10x. And then square the last term, plus 25. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this equation equal to 0. Try to keep the x squared positive. So I'll subtract 3x on each side 
and I'll subtract 13 on each side. Okay? So when I subtract 3x, it gives me x squared uh, plus 7x. Subtract 13, so plus 12. Let's factor the right side of the equation. 0 equals x plus 4 and x plus 3. Because you're looking for two numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 7. Okay, The two numbers that you want when you factor have to multiply to 12 and add to 7. So those two numbers are 4 and 3. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 plus 3 is 7. Solve each of these equations. x plus 4 equals 0. And x plus 3 equals 0. x equals negative 4. And x equals negative 3. But we have to check over our answers and, answers and see if they actually work. Sometimes they don't work. That's called an extraneous solution. So let's check over x equals negative 4. Then we'll check x equals negative 3. x equals negative 4. 3 times negative 4 plus 13 and minus 5. It's going to give you negative 12 plus 13 under the square root. It's going to give you the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is 1. Minus 5 equals negative 4. This is supposed to equal x, the equation. x is negative 4, so we got that. So that one works. So x equals negative 4 is a solution. We can circle that, and we just checked it over, so we know that one works. It's not an extraneous solution. Let's check x equals negative 3 and see if that one works. 3 times negative 3 plus 13. And minus 5. So that'll give you negative 9 plus 13. That'll give you the square root of 4. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So that one works because we were checking to see if it equals x. And that one does equal our x of negative 3. So this one works. That means x equals negative 3 is also a solution. If, if one of those answers does not work, so suppose this one does not work. Suppose you got like 8 down there. Well, then that would be called an extraneous solution, which means you don't actually circle it because it doesn't work. Okay. But that is the end of that. That was the quiz review on rational exponents and solving radical equations.